What's up guys? Steven Austin Toski here of MGO Fish. Welcome to the fish vlog. Uh, first one, episode one. Uh, today we're going to be talking about... Not great. <laughs> if you didn't watch a game, don't. Michigan uh, got their butts handed to them. I have four topics for the day. Number one, offense. I'm going to talk mainly about O'Corn versus Peters. Number two, offensive line roster and also the recruiting in the past couple of years for offensive line. Number three, defense. I'll talk about the safeties. I'll talk about McCray on Barkley, Don Brown a little bit. Number four, fire people. I'm not advocating fire anybody. This is mainly in response to Twitter. There was just a whole lot of nonsense after the game. Number one, O'Corn versus Peters. Let's go over O'Corn. Let's go over his resume this year. Four games thus far. Purdue, he provided a spark in a way that Spate wasn't. Michigan State, he was obviously not very impressive. Three interceptions. Uh, worse off than that is some very bad missed reads. He didn't look comfortable at all in the pocket. If he wasn't making a bad read, more often than not, he was leaving a pocket that was well blocked. And if he wasn't leaving the pocket, more often the times than not, he should have. Indiana, still not great. Less than 60 yards passing on the day, which is never the sign of a good quarterback. Two performances in a row uh, that were not good. Finally, Penn State, in my opinion, one of his better performances of the year, but still, he seems to be hesitating quite a bit on his reads. Overall, just not great. You know, he has game experience, but he's looked really uncomfortable in the pocket. Seems to be operating kind of on a limited playbook, even then not executing very well with that. So that displays a lack of confidence from the staff. I think by now we know what we have with O'Corn and it's it's not the best. Moving over to Peters. Honestly, we don't we don't know what we have with Peters. Obviously, he came in as a pretty highly touted uh, four-star recruit in the spring game. He looked comfortable uh, in the pocket. He looked pretty poised and, and pretty confident in his throws. It's like his footwork was down. He had good technique and he looked comfortable. But again, that was spring, so hard to say how he's progressed since then. There's been talk from Harbaugh himself and others about his lack of command and general loudness in that position. Obviously, Harbaugh likes his guys to be confident, to have control of the offense, and to really have some bravado at the position to uh, to lead the offense. And then there's rumors that even McCaffrey is above him on the depth chart. So if those hold true, uh, you have a, a freshman, true freshman in McCaffrey who's redshirting. So obviously, that kind of puts Peters by default in the backup role right now. The main argument I see a lot of people having is O'Corn's not great, and we've already lost two games, and the Big Ten is out of reach. So why not give the future the chance? People think Peters is the future, which he very possibly could be. And who's to say he won't be better? We don't know. Uh, I think a lot of people just want to see the future and want to see what we have in Peters because we, he doesn't have game experience. A lot of people are just curious to see what we have. So I have, I have two main arguments against that. Number one is he's behind O'Corn for a reason. I, I don't know the reason that he's behind him. It's up to you to think if it's a good reason or not. I don't see practice every day. Staffs have been wrong before, but I'm going to err on the side of the coaching staff. Number two reason is that a lot of people were saying that it couldn't get worse than Spate. And then we see what O'Corn does in the Michigan State game, uh, which was definitely worse than, I won't say definitely because you never know what happens. It was likely worse than anything that Wilton Spate would have done in that game. Uh, but we have proof this year that someone at the quarterback position who wasn't starting was actually worse than the starting quarterback. So he was behind him for a reason. Peters is behind O'Corn. For a reason. It comes down to coaching philosophy. If O'Corn is above Peters and they think they have a better shot of winning now, Harbo's a now guy. He's he's looking at next week and he's saying, okay, which of these guys, O'Corn or Peters, gives me the best chance to win? For whatever reason, uh, O'Corn is that guy to give him the best chance. I think it's a fair argument to say, look at 2018 as the year, because it doesn't look like Big Ten is a possibility for this year. But overall, that's just not how Harbaugh operates. And he's going to play the guy who he thinks gives him the best chance next week. Okay, number two, offensive line, roster, and recruiting. So 2013, number seven class. 2014, number 19 class. 2015, number 49 class. 
2016 number five class and 2017 number three class. 2013, uh, these would be our fifth year seniors, Patrick Kugler, Kyle Bosch, Dave Dawson, Chris Fox, Logan Tully Tillman, and Dan Samuelson. Of all six of these guys, only one stand, that's Patrick Kugler. He was the number one overall center. He was a high four star. This is the first year he's starting. You know, obviously number one overall center. Yeah, you'd expect a little more production out of that, but he's still with the program. He is starting holding the job decently. Kyle Bosch, he transferred. He's now at West Virginia as a fifth year senior. Dave Dawson, he was buried on the depth chart. He ended up not taking a grad year. I don't think he's playing football anymore. Chris Fox ran into some injuries in high school. He never really panned out, couldn't get over that, that injury bug. Logan Tully Tillman was in line to start at tackle this year, probably. He was kicked out of the program for some not so great things. Finally, Dan Samuelson, uh, he was a transfer as well. What you're left with is, is one guy. It's kind of started by default. For that year, I'm gonna put it as an O for six. You know, you can't guarantee all these guys would still be around, but you'd probably want it, uh, another one or two of those guys in the program. 2014, two guys, Mason Cole and Juwan Bushel Beatty. Mason Cole, he's projected to be an NFL center, so he's been forced to play out of position at left tackle. And Juwan Bushel Beatty, he was a general three star. I'll put him at below average, starter almost by default, and then he got pulled last week against Penn State. So I'm gonna say that's a one in one hit on Mason Cole, he's, he's going to the NFL. Juwan Bushel Beatty has been struggling on a struggling offensive line. Moving on, 2015, these are your th year three players. Uh, you have three players, Grant Newsom, you have John Runyon Jr., and you have Nolan Elysio. Grant Newsom, devastating injury. Um, I would show it, but I don't want to because it was that bad. He almost lost his leg. That's a two-year injury for Grant Newsom. He was showing quite a bit of promise. The most devastating injury for uh, 2017 by far. Next is John Runyon Jr. If an offensive line is a sixth man, uh, he's it. John Runyon Jr. came in for Mike Unwenu in the Purdue game a little bit. And finally, Nolan Elysio, the rotating guy at right tackle with JBB. Again, another generic three-star. Hasn't really shown up too much at right tackle. We're 0-3 in terms of uh, quality starters. So finally, 2016, couple big misses. Can't close with Devery Hamilton. Isaiah Wilson headed to Georgia. Couldn't lure in Alex Leatherwood. I believe he's at Alabama now. Those are three really important tackles that we missed out on. They left Eric Swenson. I uh, didn't want a spot for him. He's now at Oklahoma. They took three overall recruits. You got Steven Spinellis, Ben Bredesen, who is the starting left guard. Mike Onwenu out of Cast Tech. He's a starting right guard. And debatably one of our best offensive linemen right now. Too early to tell in Spinellis, so I'm going to say two for two right now. And finally, 2017, I think it's just too early to tell. Uh, we do have a couple tackle prospects. Cesar Ruiz, number one overall center, has gotten in some sna some snaps this year. It's looking like a good class for 2017, but again, I don't want to project anything this early on. Overall, offensive line, there's just not a lot of options. You look at the 2013, 14, 15 classes that, that really make up the bulk or should make up the bulk of your offensive line. There's not a whole lot. We're having to fill those gaps with true sophomores or some guys that probably shouldn't be starting on this line. Okay, number three, defense. This was the number two um, overall defense coming into the Penn State game. Didn't look like number two defense. With Don Brown, you'd expect more against that kind of offense. Didn't really produce. You have a good offensive coordinator. You have two weeks preparation. McSorley played out of his mind and a Heisman running back. It's going to be hard to stop that. It is what it is, um, but still, I, I was expecting more. If, if you want to compete, you need your offense to give you enough time to rest, and your defense does just need to... to play a really, really good game, and they were far from that. I'll touch on the safeties first. Um, run plays, they just whiffed. I think Metellus struggled a bit. Uh, I repeatedly saw Kinnell struggle quite a bit as well. I think I was more disappointed in their output in the run game rather than pass game. A couple passes were uh, really hard to defend. Some really bad angles um, on Barkley at the edge where I don't know what they were doing. I think more frustrating for me was that it looked like the first time Don Brown was clearly out schemed in this game. Uh, there were a couple times where we had Barkley in the slot with Mike McCray covering him. It's just not going to work out well. If you're coming up with a game plan 
and your game plan includes having a 6'5", 250-pound guy in the slot in space against a home run threat Heisman favorite running back, maybe don't go with that game plan. If there's an Achilles heel for Brown, you know, I think I think this is it. The Iowa game last year, Dalvin Cook with Florida State in the bowl game last year. Now you have this Penn State game with, with Barkley. Ohio State's going to try the same thing. And if you don't make a change, Kevin Wilson and Urban Meyer are going to make you pay for it. Still a young, good group. Maybe not as elite as we thought. Starts with Don Brown. I expect him to make the changes necessary. Fourth and final point, fire every... No. I posted a question on Twitter. Uh, if you don't want Don Brown or Jim Harbaugh, who else would you suggest Michigan gets a defensive coordinator or head coach? I got the usual answers for head coach, Nick Saban, Urban Meyer, Dabo Sweeney, got some Les Miles, which was comical. You know, it, t it takes time. A lot of people's argument for this is, in year three, these are his guys, and he's not performing. Again, you go back to the recruiting classes. These guys you're seeing in year three are from that number 19, that number 49 recruiting class. Not an excuse because Harbaugh was a part of that number 49 overall class. The positions where the cupboard was bare, quarterback and offensive line. This is the time that we're seeing that deficiency really negatively impact the team. It takes time to build a powerhouse. That time is more than three years. It just requires patience. It sucks, but the fact remains that last year, Michigan was a spot away or an inch away, depending on which side of that Ohio State spot you you lie from a Big Ten championship appearance against a team they already beat. If they win that game, it's a playoff appearance. If that were to happen, everyone would be seeing this year as a rebuild year. People were still saying this was an eight and four year. Then Michigan starts off, you know, four and zero, number two overall defense. People are raising expectations. Loses to MSU in a monsoon, and then loses to the number two overall team with a Heisman running back. And all of a sudden, the sky is falling. It's a five and two team, the youngest team in the country. Anyone comparing Harbaugh to Butch Jones or Brady Hoke are, are idiots, and they're doing it just for the clicks or the attention. And that's the Paul Feinbaum way that's how he makes his money that's how he keeps his job my prediction is nine and four changes do have to be made there are definitely areas in which michigan should be performing better than they are right now but if you don't trust the trajectory of the program uh agree to disagree man that's it for episode one of the fish vlog let me know in the comments uh, what you what do you think about all this? You know, if I didn't mention a reason why you want to start Peters, why do you want to start Peters? You know, I hear a lot of Tim Drebno talk of wanting him fired. You know, give me an explanation about that. Let me know your thoughts. You know, maybe I'll do one next week. We'll see. Thanks for watching. See you later and go blue.